28 years later, oh. Magnus Court, as we see Tom Pidcock really pushing things. Magnus Court and Jonas Vingago, but you cannot take your eyes off this bike race for one minute. There's something happening just about everywhere on the road. It's, it's beautiful to watch a, a confident descender, isn't it? But it still leaves you with your heart in your mouth when you see the speeds that he was going around that fairly sharp right-hand corner there. And it is a big wide road. You know, this is what they climbed up yesterday, of course. You can see the apex of the corners and the exit to most of them because it is wide and open. But nevertheless, the, the speed with which he's shut this gap, Rob, to the rides in front of him is, is mightily impressive. Sean, we're talking 35 seconds he's managed to eke out over the yellow jersey on the first, what, three, four kilometres of this descent? Yes, well, you know, he is um, a demon descender, as we say in cycling. You see the way he goes around the right <laughs> here. <laughs> uh, and, you know, he's not making a huge effort. And, uh, you know, that is the thing here. Get out of the peloton for the descent. When you have that quality of uh, descending, you can make up so much time without having to make too much of an effort. And that is the important thing here. You know, he's going to yeah, gain a lot of ground on the descent and we could see him getting very close to the front end of the, uh, the, ra the race here before we get on to, you know, the next, uh, the next climb and, you know, the Col de Telegraph. But, uh, yeah, he is uh, eating into the advantage of the guys that were out in front. He goes past Louvel, beyond Chris Froome and moves up now and is the third group on the road. And just just look at the difference in the ability of the descending. Pickcock versus the world, really, because the way he takes a corner there, he must save a million watts there, just having to make that effort. It's incredible. Pickcock is at it again. He's decided to move out from that group. And anything that Paulus can do, Pickcock can do, well, maybe better, certainly just as well. I mean, it's impressive to go down that quick, but he's, he's what's to come. He's got quite a bit of valley road before he starts to go at the telegraph, and just with two of them, if he can open up a big enough gap, great, but if not, they're just in whoop, in no man's land. Oh, that was a close one next to that pulcher. I'm not sure it is all about that at the moment, but as the gap continues to rise and as Jumbo Visma seem content in wow. allowing it to increase in terms of the time gap, that might start to come into uh, the forefront of our minds. Adam, watching this, of course, you're marvelling at this descent. We all are. You know certainly a lot about me, where I'm sitting. I'm just looking at Pitcock and the way he seems to see each corner, the way he knows the entry and exit, it's so much easier. Yeah, well, I mean, that's the thing. He doesn't know the exit. That's the tough thing with going downhill is that the guys don't know where the exit of the corner is. They can see as far as they can see around the corner, but it's just knowing when to turn in. <laughs> and if you watch Tom, he's turning in late, he's throwing in biking late, but he's just kissing that apex of the corner perfectly. And as I said, you get as much speed as you can out of it, but it's also setting up for the next corner. You can go out of one corner super quick. Tom Pidcock is the man who accelerates. And it is Tom Bidcock, so good on the crossfield, exceptional on the mountain bike, and he's putting in the first test here on the road. Remember, as Sean was just saying, it is a Tour de France debut with Ciccone at the back now with Paulus. Mikey's able to follow, and Froome looking OK as well. He's looking well, he's struggling to get to the wheel, but he seems to be making it centimetre by centimetre to Mankey's, but Tom Pidcock looks over the shoulder. He likes what he sees because the gap is being maintained for the moment. We spoke about Ciccone, his sort of unpredictability, and now he's the one going out the back with Nielsen Paulus. And look at the face of Pidcock this week. I spoke about this probably two hours ago. The calm face of Tom Pidcock, all energy into turning the pedals. Smooth. Roman Bardet going backwards for DSM. That means that Geraint Thomas is on his way up to the podium. Tadej Pogacar is moving up from third to second, but Jonas Vingegaard remains the leader. Two minutes, 22, his gap to Pogacar. Pidcock getting a shower here on his way up. Tremendous technique, wonderfully ridden on the defence. Away down the Galibier, Thomas Pidcock sees the finish line. A shake of the head, but he better believe it, because the Tour de France blasts off to planet Pidcock on Alpe d'Huez. He's the youngest ever winner on this mighty mountain, and Tom Pidcock has hit the big time on the road. World champion on the crossfield, Olympic champion on the mountain bike. He is now a bona fide Tour de France stage hunter, and he has a win on his debut on the race.